Last year we brought you The Right Brain Workout Volume 1. This year the authors of that book, Alex Waddleton and Russell Howcroft, are back with even more exercises for your creative brain and they join us now. Gentlemen, congratulations on the sequel. Um, we should explain the right side of our brain is the creative side, hence the name of the book. Why should we, we be working on it? Well... Uh, thanks for that question, Waleed. Uh, it, it turns out that we actually get taught... Well, creativity gets taught out of us. Um, so just think about those of us that have got five-year-olds or those of us that have had five-year-olds. Just think about how insanely creative they are. And then by the time that five-year-old turns 15, they've actually lost quite a lot of their creativity by the time they're 25. Most of us don't think we're creative at all. And, of course, all of us are. All of us are born with creative capabilities. And yet, how many conversations are we in when people say, oh, I'm not the creative one, you know? The creative one's the person over there in the sandpit. It's just nonsense. Every single one of us has got creative capability. That's why the book was created. It's created just to give us exercises um, in order to try and just prove our creativity, yeah? Yeah, and we also think, you know, with robots and AI coming, the future job market, if you're not creative, you, you might be doing yourself a disservice. So if you're thinking about that, stay creative and you'll stay, make yourself relevant and your kids keep them creative because that's the future. So we've got to future-proof ourselves and have some fun while you're doing it. Now, we've all heard of STEM. Um, so, you know, the sciences and there's an orientation to STEM. Well, whilst we're orientating to STEM, the Northern Hemisphere, they've all worked out that it's actually about STEAM. There's an A and the A stands for arts or creativity and everything that creativity means. Creativity means collaborating, yeah? It means solving problems together and it means exercising the right side of your brain. Speaking of collaboration, can I get a question in, Russ? I'm just enthusiastic for it, Pete. You, you certainly are, and I love your passion. There are so many new exercises uh, in this book. May I suggest for book three you actually put the answers at the back of the book? Uh, that, <laughs> that's just a suggestion. There, there is one that I'm concerned about, exercise number 46, which asks you to draw a cow inside out and then describe how you would milk it. Um, Alex, is, is the person yeah. who wrote this one OK? Oh, well, who knows who's OK and who's not OK? Uh, the person who wrote that is Esther Clarahan, Clarahan, who's one of the advertising greatest recruiters, and she's a little bit mad, uh, yeah. which is good. Uh, what, what, when I sort of got, read that question, I was thinking it's interesting because the stomachs are going to be on the outside now, so I was wondering if you just got this, the cow, gave it a lot of ouzo, had to go to the hospital, get its stomach pumped, and you get the milk out through the stomachs on the outside of the, outside of the cow. Maybe that's a way to do it. don't know. Well, uh, so hang on. Your answer know. is to drug cows? <laughs> That's where we've ended up. Yeah, here. That's always my answer. <laughs> that is a, that is one of that is one of the odder questions. It is. Yeah, and that is definitely a question yeah. from somebody in the advertising industry. Pick that one a mile off. Now, Russell, you have so many different yeah. jobs. I never quite know what job you're up to. So, can you please answer number fifteen for us, which is describe what you do for a living so it makes sense to a three-year-old. Well, thank you. Uh, what do I do for a living that makes sense to a three-year-old? I, I, I help my friends. Oh, I'll do that. Now, now, now say, say the truth. <laughs> I help my friends buy things. Oh, that's pretty much the truth, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I, yeah. I try and I try my very best to uh, channel my inner five-year-old or inner three-year-old, um, be energised about ideas, um, encourage, encourage people that any idea is a good idea until it, until it proves itself not to be a, a good idea like an inside-out cow, which would be impossible to milk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be a bad idea. Now, I've got a four-year-old and I suspect yeah. that he might not li like this tip to boost creativity, which is switching our phone screens to black and white. What does that do other than annoy your children? Well, it just makes you become a little bit less addicted to the phone because there's research that if it's in colour, you just your brain keeps going, oh, I'll go back to that thing that looks pretty. If it's black and white, your brain just goes, oh, maybe I don't have to, to be on it. And I think there's... I saw, saw a stat recently, the average teenager is on their phone seven hours and 22 minutes a day, which I don't think anyone would think is a great thing. So anything that we can get people, you know, off their phones and off devices and doing something with a pen and paper, it's going to be good for the brain, sort of just a... To, to wake up the brain in a different way and sort of challenge yourself and have some fun again. I'd answer that differently. I just think everything looks a lot cooler in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Spot the ad man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alex Waddleton and Russell Howcroft's Right Brain Workout number two is out now. It is great fun. Go and get it. Thanks so much for the chat, guys. Thank you. Thank you.